No? Uh, I don't know if that worked. <laughs> oh yeah, so I wanted to pretend I was doing marathon commentary here. So this is Kingsley's Adventure. Uh, this is a 3D platformer on the PS1. It's kind of an action-adventure game. Um, a lot of people look at it and they think like, oh, it looks like it was going for an Ocarina of Time type thing. I see a bunch of items, I see like a bunch of collectible options, and no, it's... don't... don't think of it like Ocarina of Time. You will be heavily disappointed if you do. Uh, right there you're seeing the first out of bounds of many. There will be so many of those. We just skipped a, a big room in the tutorial, we skipped the combat tutorial, we skipped the crossbow tutorial. There's a lot of out of bounds in this game. Uh, I will get more into that later. But back to the basics. We are Kingsley. We are a fox. We are a fox who aspires to be a true knight uh, for the, I want to say it's the Carrot Kingdom? Um, that sounds right to me. <laughs> In order to become a true knight, we first needed to go through that training so we could be trusted with a weapon. Our friend, our dear, dear friend, Old Wrinkle, gave us a dagger. We can now go talk to the king and queen, who will send us on our first quest, our first knightly quest, to help a town that I, I want to say is just called Ocean Town. I don't remember. Uh, the residents of Ocean Town have a problem. They need us to help with the problem. That's kind of the format of the game. Expect a lot of that. We're going to go to a town. We're going to help with the problem. We're going to leave. One of the reasons that I say this is nothing like an Ocarina of Time type game is once we help the town, that's the only thing to do there. There's gonna be another mandatory boss fight later, but that's it. Uh, also, we're about to do another Out of Bounds, don't worry about it. We collect this green key. Uh, there's a bunch of, like, fruit doors. Oh my goodness, this is not a hard jump. There we go. A bunch of fruit doors associated with each type of fruit key. Uh, but the keys are generic. You can just use them... Oh, I was supposed to split. You can use them wherever you want. Um, as long as, you know, there's another green apple door somewhere, we can you just use it then. And since we have that out of bounds in that room, we can take the key from that room and use it later. Uh, the community calls this key smuggling, which I want to say is a term taken from the medieval community. I... I think it was Jaxler who started calling it that, which Jaxler is, I believe, also a medieval runner, so it would make sense. But yeah, we're uh, we're going into the first dungeon here. This is the... If it's not the shortest, it's the second shortest, and it's definitely the easiest. Uh, there's only one out of bounds we're gonna do here, but there's some other cool stuff that's going on. For the most part, though, we're just gonna be running through these halls. Uh, we could fight these enemies, but why? Not really much reason to. Uh, one thing that is worth mentioning that gets mentioned a lot with this game is it does have tank controls. So you see me, you know, running straight forward, and I'm doing a lot of strafing left and right. If you're playing a 3D platformer with tank controls, odds are strafing is your bread and butter. Another out of bounds. That's the one out of bounds we do in this level. If you're playing a tank control 3D platformer and you're trying to turn to face everywhere that you're going to go, I assure you, you are almost definitely playing it wrong. I hear a lot of complaints about 3D, about tank control platformers, how they're hard to control. And in my experience, it's just that you're not getting how it's supposed to be controlled. I feel extremely comfortable running through this game. Uh, and I did, basically the first time I played it, because I have a lot of experience playing games like this. I probably shouldn't spend actual marathon commentary time just ragging on people who don't like tank control 3D platformers, even though I love them. Anyway, there is only one out of bounds we do, but uh, these are some of the the cool other skips. You saw, I just jumped off a mountain and hit a loading zone. Uh, you're supposed to run down that huge hill. Uh, we don't need to. <laughs> just 
Know where the loading zone is, run at it, jump, you're fine. Don't worry about it. In this room, we're going to do something a little similar, but we need to actually climb the mountain first. I'm going to run under that barrel. I'm going to not touch that wall and fail that jump. We're going to see if we can remember the angle to walk here. I want to say it's this way, and then just hold left. Yeah, that's basically right. Uh, and then, yeah, it's like we're on the outer ring of the mountain, and now we're supposed to, you know, run down all the way down to another another raft, but now I'm good. I'm just gonna jump there, and then we're on another, <laughs> another like, floaty we bought from Target. Oh, and I was supposed to split again. And now we're up to our first boss, Gallagher. Gallagher... Oh, I... <laughs> There are things about Gallagher. You see him doing, like, two hits, and then he jumps away. Each of these hits, it's possible, if you're swinging just right, to get multiple damage on him. Uh, basically, you can take this fight that's normally going to be a couple of minutes and cut it down to, like, 30 seconds. Like, there, I just got a double hit. If... If you watch a TAS of this fight, it goes ridiculously fast. Every hit is like a triple. He jumps to good locations, it's hilarious. And then eventually he's low enough on health that he stops jumping and... Oh, come on, Gallagher. And you just fight him. Uh, I should just skip that split, because that's not going to be right. <laughs> We defeated Gallagher. Uh, Gallagher, I guess, was a pirate who was kind of terrorizing the town. No more. No more. We're gonna go back to town and talk to... What's that NPC's name? Pete? I want to say Skinny Pete, but that's 100% not the right name. Um... I don't remember. This guy. This fish. What's his name? His name is... Briny Jim. I knew it was adjective common name, but... Anyway. That's Ocean Town. We're out of there. Combo? Badger? Maybe. Um, that green key that we got earlier, by the way, it was supposed to be used in that room we just went through. Uh, the one, you know, with the entrance to Ocean Town. But when we leave Ocean Town, the game kind of recognizes that we're supposed to be able to go through there, and it just opens the gate for us. Uh, which is very convenient. It's actually extremely convenient that happens. The devs did not need to do that for us. Anyway, now that we have gone through the Ocean Town quest, uh... The king and queen tell us, hey, poor luck village is having some problems. You need to go help out there. So off we go to our next true night adventure. Now, there's going to be a couple of extra things to do in the game. There's four towns we're going to visit. Each of them has their, you know, their necessary quest. Each town also has a shadow knight that is terrorizing it. Um... The Shadow Knights we are almost entirely all going to do at the end of the game. There's one I'll do a little earlier, just because the routing works out well. Uh, but yeah, we are going to revisit every place once to go fight an extra boss, basically. There's not an extra dungeon with them, it's just one boss in each area. And it's the uh, the four Shadow Knights, where once we defeat them, we'll be able to, to call ourselves a true knight. This room is really funny. We're supposed to go through and hit some switches to turn off this fire. If you time it right, you can just run through it. Those two jumps I did through the room, uh, they line you up just perfectly. You can just run through the fire, you're fine. This level, by the way, is especially where you're gonna start seeing a lot of out-of-bounds shenanigans. Like, really, a lot, a lot. Uh, every room? I think every room is going to have something. Gonna get a little extra health here. Probably don't need it. Uh, we just picked up some grape keys that we're hopefully gonna hold on to. We're gonna try to skip the grape door, but that's not a guarantee. But before we go that way, 
We need to pick up this pineapple key. The correct path is past a pineapple door. We're gonna pick up this pineapple key before we go there. Uh, this room, I'm gonna do a strat that, like, if you do it perfectly, it saves, like, almost a second. Oh, but I failed it. Basically, as you run through this room on the right path, uh, these uh, platforms will lower, and as soon as you fail the right path, they'll all rise up again. But, if you fail it, you can... Ah, almost. I got the key, that's the important thing. I also wanted to go for a life. If you fail it, you can get up onto one of those platforms as they're rising again and get out of bounds there. And just basically skip the whole room. So we got this pineapple key. We're walking up to this pineapple door. You can see the pineapple keyhole there. But nah, I'm good. Uh, instead, I'm going to jump onto this wall. And then the grape door is the one I'm facing right now. I'm going to go for a jump here. That looks good. Is that good? Oh, that's good. We skipped the grape door too. That's awesome. <laughs> So again, all this key smuggling, you might be thinking, wouldn't it just be faster to open the grape door with the keys? Why did you even get the grape key? Well, it's all because of this key smuggling. We can use it later. We can skip a puzzle later by skipping that door now. It's great. It's so good. I love this run in large part because of this reason. Uh, that out of bounds I just did, that like clip up the wall. Not really an out of bounds. We didn't ever... We never left the bounds of the game, but that clip up the wall where enemies are hitting us, that's the easiest one, I think, to perform. Uh, and it's, uh, oops. It's something you end up seeing a lot of through the run. There's a very difficult organ puzzle where the notes are written on a wall, like, ten feet away. This is a fairly difficult room. I'm gonna go for a somewhat tight cycle here. Uh, there is another green apple key in this room, and these keys... It won't look like I picked up an extra... Ooh, that's... That's tough. Um, I don't know how I fell there. I'm just gonna have to wait on the cycle a little bit. Anyway, it won't look like we're holding an extra green apple key now, but we are. And so as I come up here and hit this guy a little bit and use a key, come on, you'll notice it still just says we have a green apple key. It, it does stack them for us, fortunately. Uh, I would like to have more health here, so I'm going to pick up this heart. If you're doing really well on health, you don't need to open that chest and you can save a little time. Or you can just jump into some lava like a, a big dum-dum. That's also an option. Silly. But we needed to go through all of that, that extra room, just to get this banana key. Also, we could open a banana door right here. If we could skip this door, it would be so nice. Uh, but I unfortunately do not know of a way to do it. We do have a shield, for what it's worth. And I use it quite a bit, because when enemies hit you, they frequently stop attacking you for a second. So like with that guy, I can start running past him, raise my shield, he'll bonk it, and then I just go open the door. I'm gonna do one more damage out of bounds here. That one's a little tough. I usually get it on the second hit, it's really hard to get on the first hit. And then, we're gonna drop into this portal, and you may have noticed we took damage as we landed. We actually took enough damage that it kills us. We just live through the loading zone and then die immediately after. <laughs> now there is an out of bounds we could do in this room. However, you may notice we picked up some grape keys earlier. So we don't need to do the out of bounds here. It would be another enemy damage one and those are always dangerous. So we're just gonna pick up this banana key and then use the grape key to open the door. If we didn't have that grape key, there would normally be, like, this big ol' extra path we'd need to go down, and that. I don't want to deal with that, so. Key storage it is. I'm gonna pick up a red apple key. 
And this one doesn't save a ton of time, but there is another out of bounds you can do here to skip that door, and holding onto that red apple key will save a little bit of time later. That's also... Yeah. That is when I want to split. This is the second boss. This is Snuff. Snuff has stolen all the food of the village. Um, and so we need to we need to beat him up. Uh, and we're not gonna fight Snuff. We're... Oh, we're gonna mess up and <laughs> try that out of bounds again. Come back here, Snuff. Luckily, this is a pretty easy out of bounds to hit. Ooh, this is extremely scary, but I think we're good. There we go. Okay, we're gonna hope that this works, but this is this is tough. So if we jump out of bounds, Snuff will actually follow us and say, "Oh no, I didn't expect that to happen," because when Snuff lands out of bounds, uh. It kills him. It just counts as a death, just like it does for us. And we also die. We lost a life. We're down to two lives now. But you'll notice we have a fork and knife item now. That's what we get for defeating Snuff. So that's the boss. Just get out of bounds, kite the boss to also jump out of bounds, and we're good. Now this next room in the game is genuinely one of the hardest. <laughs> There's uh, a big conveyor belt room in here. This is the conveyor belt that was conveying all of the food of Porlock Village into Snuff's dining room. Uh, we're gonna hit some switches to try to reverse the flow. And if we go fast enough, we can just barely catch a cycle here. Jump onto this box, which is necessary to jump onto that ledge, and that's the hardest one to get to. If we fall at any point here, um, it just, it takes a while. There are very few stairs to get up here, so it takes a long time to get back up. <laughs> that's, that's the reason we hate this room. I did it pretty well. I'm, I'm happy enough about that. Just going to not fall off that ledge I'm currently standing on. There we go. <laughs> very happy with that. Uh, and I have two lives right now. I will go ahead and pick up an extra life here. Game overs are not the end of the world. If you... Oh, here's the best character in the game, by the way. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Look at him. Look at him. Don't stop looking at him. <laughs> meep, meep, meep. That's Tartrazine. Everybody loves him. Just the roundest boy. Roundest boy you're ever gonna see. Love Tartrazine here. <laughs> oh, so game overs. It's not the end of the world if you game over. It'll send you back to the start of a dungeon. And as you may have noticed, most of the dungeons are fairly short. If you game over near the end of the fourth dungeon, that's a huge time loss. And that is the only one that is actually a danger for the, the run. I mean, like in a marathon setting, I guess. You know, obviously, once you're optimized enough with the rest of the run, dying anywhere is a problem. Uh, but in the context of, like, a marathon, anywhere else, you're losing, like, <laughs> one to five minutes from a death. Near the end of Dungeon 4, you're potentially losing, like, ten or twelve minutes. Uh, but also, if you game over in a boss fight, it'll just place you back at the start of the boss. So it's, for the most part, it's very convenient. Uh, and it also respawns you back with, uh, with full lives and full health, so in my opinion, for new runners, it's fairly generous. It's not like some games where a game over will just kick you back to the menu. So we are done with Poor Luck Village for now. We're moving on to Root Beer Village. Or Rosary Village, I think is the actual name. Uh, and they've got a problem here. Everyone here drinks root beer. Uh, and something wrong is happening with the root beer, so everyone's gotten really tired. So the first thing we need to do is go into this coffee shop. They're the only ones who haven't gotten sick, because they, they drink coffee. They don't drink root beer. We're going to get a cup of coffee to wake up the mayor. Uh, or is it to... No, it's to wake up this guy. <laughs> Tough nut. This guard. And he lets us talk to the mayor. 
Mayor Sober Sid. The, um... There's a lot about this area that seems to imply that this was not originally about root beer. For example, the name Sober Sid. Uh, it really feels like this was originally about actual alcohol and, uh, at some point near, near, uh, release of the game, someone from higher up said, no, you can't do that. So they changed it to all be about root beer. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe it was just a joke from them from the start, but it's funny. Uh, where did I split here? I just split on leaving the village. This is a, a short dungeon, it's just a few rooms. You get drunk on root beer daily? Yeah. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I just don't know the full effects of root beer. I guess I don't drink enough of it. We're gonna do another really cool out of bounds here. Uh, there's a big push block puzzle that you're supposed to do to open this cage and get this herb. That's the thing with this dungeon. We're supposed to be collecting three herbs to, uh, to, to be able to fix... Ah, uh, that's not quite far enough. To be able to fix the, the poison of the root beer. So we jump up there. We just move over to the side and then fall, and we can get the, the herb. We have so many different setups for that drop. I love it. <clears throat> uh, the second room here, we're just gonna do a little bit of very slightly precise platforming. And the room after this, it's just a small puzzle, so... I think for a second I'd like to... I'd like to talk a little bit about the history of this run, because I think it's it's pretty interesting. This run originally had, like, no real interesting tech about it. It was a lot of just do things the way the game kind of expects you to. Um, that's the way it was for a long time. And the run, I want to say the record was like an hour and a half or something uh, for a while. It's, it's not a super long game to begin with, but it's not terribly short either. Not like now, where the... My, my record is, like, 48 minutes. Um, eventually, a runner by the name of Rad Ringtail came and was interested in this game. It was cute. Uh, he's a tunic runner, which is also a fox-based game, so... I, I guess some people from... Oh, that's not good. Wait a minute. This guy wasn't supposed to come over here. That's fine. Anyway, Rad started running this game. Um, come on. Red started running this game and was interested in it, and when looking around for different things about it, found that there were old task videos forums. Uh, people had looked into this game and they found a bunch of Out of Bounds. Uh, a bunch of Out of Bounds, a bunch of other strats. And he was like, oh, I wonder how hard any of this stuff is. And it turned out it was basically free. It's so easy to do most of the tricks in this. Here's the boss, by the way. Uh, Brother Tim of the, the monastery turns out to be Clarence Dark Lord Jr. This this bat guy. This bat fellow. Uh, we're gonna do something similar to the snuff fight. Walk over here, and he's just gonna dive in the water to try to attack us, but that's out of bounds, so he's dead. Yo, Super Dave, thank you for the raid. I'm doing a run of this and kind of trying to do marathon commentary practice, I guess. I don't know, I might just submit this run as, as a marathon submission. I'm pretty happy with how this is going so far. Anyway. Uh, the strats, the out-of-bounds, all the tricks, Rad found they were so easy. Um, and so he started doing runs with them, and it was great. Uh, the He fairly quickly got sub-hour in the game. Uh, and while he was doing that... Uh, a friend of mine, one named Lucas, who was the only reason I knew about this game. Lucas had played it on stream before, and he was interested in speedrunning it, but when he had seen that the old speedrun uh, route was basically just play the game as is, uh, we weren't really interested in it before. But Lucas just happened to catch that Rad was playing this game. Uh, and that Rad was finding and implementing a bunch of new strats. And that piqued our interests. 
Also, I am back in Porlock Village. I'm going to go do one of the Shadow Knight fights right now. <clears throat> I mentioned earlier I'm going to do one of them early. It's this one. The rest I'm going to do basically at the end of the game. It's going to be Judas the Bull. It's a very straightforward fight. I don't have much to say about it. So anyway, Lucas and I uh, started watching Brad's runs. Brad got it into a couple marathons. It was very fun. It was very entertaining. Uh, and... During that, I also found a bunch of new stuff. Not a ton of new stuff, but a few new things that pull the record down a little further. Unfortunately, Rad and I are similar in that we love speedrunning to begin with. Ah, oh, Judas, no. We love speedrunning. We love finding new things. We love uh, sharing games with the community. Neither of us really do a lot of, like grinding a run down to complete optimization. Uh, so Rad got a pretty dang good time for the, the strats available. My current time is also pretty good for the strats available. It could go minutes lower from someone who, uh... Someone who, you know, really wants to try pushing it. But I, I don't mind, it's fun. I'm happy to leave the door open for whoever wants to dive in for that. Also, since my last PB, uh, someone... Oh no, someone whose name I'm blanking on. It starts with an I. Uh, someone made a TAS of the game, though. Someone actually finished a TAS of it, and that's available on YouTube. I'm sure if you search Kingsley Adventure TAS, you could find it. And it's very entertaining. It's most of the same strats, but there's a lot of boss manipulations that are just hilarious to watch. It's it's a great time. I highly recommend that. Uh, and that's the history of the run up to today. It really is ripe for new things. If people can figure out real-time ways to do some of the boss manipulations, that would be enormous. Um, that That would seriously be really, really big. We're going into Dungeon 4 now, though. I mentioned earlier Dungeon 4 is the long one. And honestly, for the sake of marathon safety, once I get there, I'm gonna just... Oops. I'm just gonna game over, like, immediately. Um... And f set myself back at five lives. I think that would be better. First, we need to talk to our good friend Cornflower whose jacket was stolen by the boss of Dungeon 4, and he's gonna take the lock off the door and let us in. Now, another thing that's worth mentioning is there's been a lot of key smuggling in this run. I have, I've been collecting all these keys. I keep saying, oh yeah, you know, we're, we get to skip doors to open other ones later, and like... Oh my goodness, they're almost all for this dungeon. <laughs> I, I think there's been a couple of keys that we used earlier. Okay, now that we're back up to five lives, we're gonna... Gonna actually properly go through the dungeon. There's a couple of tough spots here, but I'm really not too worried about this. Just gonna drop off these stairs a little bit. We're about to collect some more health, so it's not a big deal that we took some hits here. Uh, this first room we're going to, there's two exits to this room. One of them has a big, like, archery course for the crossbow that we got at the end of the last dungeon. But because we have this banana key, we just don't need to do it. <laughs> we can just leave. Why do that when you don't have to do that? That's my question. This room has a bunch more archery stuff. Again, we got this crossbow at the end of the last dungeon, and... We barely need it, because we could just do things like that. That's a fairly tough out-of-bounds. This is a really tough out-of-bounds. This is genuinely one of the, uh, the big ones that makes me worried about this run. <laughs> this is one where, like, I really need a, a more consistent- Ooh, it worked. A more consistent way of doing that before I want to go for PB attempts again. That one is disgusting. I hate it. This room, again, there's a bunch more archery stuff. There's a big maze you need to go through. We smuggled a pineapple key earlier, so we can just leave. 
That room would take minutes. This room's actually pretty short, uh, but we have this cherry key, so we don't need to do it. And then if we could smuggle another banana key, we could skip this room, but there really isn't a good candidate for, for that. This room is pretty short as it is, and the only other banana key uh, takes a long time to get to. So even if we could skip that banana door, it would definitely be better to just not get that key and do this room the same as I am right now. Ooh. I like playing those, uh, those walls a little risky. If you fall off, you die, but... But it's fun. Just gonna snipe that bat real fast. This room is also going to have an out of bounds. And I'm not particularly good at it. It's another one of the, the last ones that was... Oops. There we go. The last ones that was added to this run. Um, and it's it's tough. You need to like really get yourself wedged into the wall just right. Uh, it's this corner here. We need to we need to get in there, and we need to get in there in such a way that when I hold right trigger to strafe, Kingsley doesn't just pop out like that. I need Kingsley to stay in the wall. And even if this takes me a few tries, it'll still be faster than, uh, than doing this room normally. I, I don't have much to go on other than... There we go. Don't have much to go on other than just try it and hope for the best, unfortunately. Fun thing about the, uh, the arrow pickups in this, by the way, is... They only become collectible when you are out of arrows. For some reason they did it that way. You can't just walk over one and refill. You need to clear your arrows to, to refill back up to 10. This room, unfortunately, is very long and doesn't really have a good skip. I, I think this room would be a good one for donations if, uh, if we were in a marathon that is donation relevant, I guess. It's mostly just a lot of platforming, and some of it's a little tight. It's kinda... I <laughs> just checked my lives, even though I have full... forgot about that. There's one kinda neat strat that I'm gonna do near the end. Um, there's a, a rat enemy coming up. Uh, and we're gonna trick him into jumping off a cliff. Because you could fight him. He does a lot of blocking, though, and so it's a little bit of a pain. Uh, and he will get in your way if you're just trying to push this block. But if you block him and then run over there, he'll just jump off that cliff and you're fine. That That is the fastest way we have found to do this. I think theoretically you could use that guy to get out of bounds and skip pulling these blocks. Uh, but the walls in this room are weird, and it's it's a problem. This room coming up here is fun. We need to run fast to catch this, and then just keep going straight and keep going straight. Get an extra life. Take this guy down. See if we can get a hit way over here. That's definitely not it. But if we stand right here, hit this guy a few times... See if we can hit the, the bridge triggers here. Oh, we did. Nice. That saves us a little bit right here. Yes! Oh, that's so good. That's as perfect as that room can go. That was the right cycles. And then we run and run and run and stop! And run and run and run. This is a big roller room. Every corner of this room has a key on it. Uh, this room is also pretty straightforward once you know what you're doing and are properly prepared for the, uh, the rollers. You'll notice I'm running on these slopes a little bit. Those do speed you up as you go on them. 
it looks like you're in danger of being, like, pulled into the slime below, but you're fine. I think I wait here? Yeah, I do. And then we come down and use all the keys. And you may be saying to yourself, Zando Toaster, you promised us crazy out-of-bounds and wacky hijinks, and you've just been doing these last couple of rooms normally. What's up with that? Give us something wild and wacky and scary. And I will. Give me a minute. Oh my goodness. Let's just... I'll do it in this next room. Just for you. Just for you, curious viewer. Curious and impatient viewer. There's a big guy here. Uh, his name is Mo. I just made that up. His name, he doesn't have a name. Uh, we're just gonna politely ask him to move out of his home position over to this corner. Ooh. And <laughs> he's gonna hit us twice and we teleport to the top of this room. This is a really long room. Uh, we need to... We need to do a bunch of stuff to get through that room. That room is normally minutes long. Uh, but yeah, if that guy hits us twice, it can teleport us. I've never gotten it on the first hit. I don't think you can get it on the first hit. Wow. Even with the intentional game over at the start of the dungeon, that saved time over my PB. Still nowhere close to best, but save time to PB. I'm gonna... Okay, I'm not gonna die right there. I should have died right there. Oh my goodness. This guy. I don't remember this boss's name, actually, offhand. He's some kind of wizard. Some kind of rat wizard guy. He does a lot of teleporting around. He sometimes does that. And then flies after he kills us? I don't know. Imagine not knowing every boss's name. I can check it here. Reggie. This guy's name is Reggie. Honestly, not sure I knew that he flies after he kills you. I guess I've never looked at him then. Because normally it's that he teleports behind me and surprises me with a, uh, with one of those. He is being mean right now, also. I normally think of this as one of the easier fights in the run. <laughs> oh my god. Stop. Stop, Reggie. <laughs> Jeez. Anyway, we got the, the code for Cornflower. How's my health? Bad. It's so bad. Why did that give me four hearts? Okay. I'm gonna think about that later. <laughs> hearts are only supposed to heal you two hearts. Like, the heart pickups only heal you two. Why did that give me four? I guess I double interacted with the heart. I don't know. We have the code. We're gonna go to Cornflower's book house. You may be thinking, book house, do you mean like a library or like a bookstore? Uh, but no, it's just a giant house that is shaped like a book. He's, uh, what do you call it? A nerd. So yeah, he just lives in a book. Like all nerds do. Uh, now, we are supposed to do some other stuff to get to the Shadow Knight in this area. But instead we're gonna try to just jump across this river here. Which, the jump across the river isn't that bad. Jumping up here is tough. You really need to either mash like your life depends on it, or time these jumps extremely well like I just did. I'm surprised. Where they live, the books. Yes. Oh, I went too far. This is the tower I wanted. I took the wrong angle there. I was thinking about book house, where they live, the books. Uh, there's a big totem here where we, uh, we get some golden arrows and shoot them into these eyes. You'll notice we finished all four of the dungeons. We still have a key left over. Uh, the Shadow Knights don't have dungeons associated with them, but they do... Some of them do have rooms. And this one will have a room where you're normally supposed to do a little puzzle. We just don't need to do that. Uh, because of this green key that we got way back at the beginning of the game. We just don't need to do this room. We've been holding on to it this whole time. Just for that. And then we're gonna fight another Shadow Knight. 
This is gonna be Gustav, I wanna say. Yes, Gustav. This boss has, like, the most potential for getting stunlocked. Uh, like, us stunlocking the boss. We've basically done it before. We've had and seen crazy good Gustav fights. And we don't understand how... How? <laughs> oh, come on. B. No! No! Oh my god. Get out of here. Get out of here. Let me up. <laughs> Horrible attempt at this fight. See, like that. I just got a bunch of hits on him in a row. No clue why. We, we don't understand it. If we could do that consistently, that would save a good chunk of time. It's one of the bigger things that has stopped me from pushing for another PB, is I feel like we are close to getting that. And just don't have it quite yet. What am I doing on lives? Five lives, that's fine. Luckily to get back across the river, if we jump in the water, it'll just spawn us to the other side. So we're gonna run along a little bit here, and then jump in like over here. And yeah, it just, it just plops us down right here, next to the, uh, the exit. Uh, next up is one of... I think it's by far my biggest time save that I found for the run. Uh, the fight, the Shadow Knight for uh, Rosary Village, Root Beer Village, is a vulture, and it's supposed to be like you know, oh, you got this crossbow, you're gonna you're gonna fight the vulture with the crossbow. Uh, this is the area you got the crossbow from, so it makes sense. Uh, we're not gonna do that. I, I have a question for everyone. Have you ever seen someone fight a bird with a sword? I think that sounds pretty exciting. Maybe that's just my I-M-H-O, but that's how I feel. How am I doing on health, though? Am I about to die? Uh, I can- I get one attempt at this. If I die, it's fine. I just do the boss again and it's easier, but... Uh, this boss normally picks up some eggs, and once it's flying with the egg, it's vulnerable to being hit by the crossbow. Ah. I guess I'm okay on health, at least. Get out of here, spiders. It doesn't seem like I did a lot just now, probably. Oh, he hit me! No! Oh, we will see how this goes. This is scary. Basically, the, the important thing is this fight is normally... Just a complete auto-scroller. A hundred percent. Uh, but because of this, you see I got a second hit on him there? When I'm really in practice, you can one-cycle the boss with the sword here. You can hit him, there we go. You can hit him, and he just won't be able to fight back, he'll just keep getting hit by the sword. <laughs> so it takes a fight that's normally... two minutes or whatever, and turns it into like 30 seconds. It's very nice. It's very nice when you can get it. We have fought three of the four Shadow Knights. We have fought uh, Judas the Bull, Gustav the uh, the Bear, and the Vulture, whose name I don't remember, that we just saw. There's one left. Uh, before we fight him, we're going to have a little cutscene with the uh, the King and Queen and the members of the court. They're going to be celebrating because we did the four main quests. And while that happens, I'm going to take a sip of water. And by a sip of water, I mean I'm going to down half a cup of water. <clears throat> I love their animations here. They just... Everybody's happy for Kingsley. Look at him! Look at Kingsley! He's so cute. I, I've i been talking a lot about the tech and the history of this run. I have not said enough just how cute Kingsley is. <clears throat> that was the hydration stream. That was it. Congrats, everybody. So anyway, we're going all the way back to Sea Town, Ocean Town, whatever it's called. 
This is the only Shadow Knight we have left. Uh, the idea is because the blacksmith from Poor Luck Village um, gave us better gloves or something, uh, we're now strong enough to go to this Shadow Knight's lair. Because there's a, a winch here, and you see a big, like, anchor-shaped ship in the distance. Look at how strong Kingsley is here. Let's just pull that closer. We're gonna try our best not to take a hit here. We need to hit these three buttons to lower this platform and go into the boss. And then if we do this right, the boss won't be invincible at any point during the fight. This, like many of the bosses, will, like, teleport around. What? What? <laughs> I swear, I swear he teleports around. I'm not lying. Ridiculous. Cool. Good video game. Good video game, dude. Anyway, that boss normally teleports around, and he's invincible while teleporting. But once he, uh, once he's under a certain health threshold, he stops teleporting. But if you hit him right as he starts a teleport and knock him under that threshold, uh, he'll cancel the teleport, but still be invincible, and you're just stuck. You need to let him kill you to reset the fight and have a chance of winning. Or, he just won't teleport, and you'll, <laughs> you'll just win! Yeah, I, uh, I don't know if the TAS even does that. <laughs> That's wild. We had to do one more talk to the king and queen, so they would give us permission to go to Skull Island. I never really talked about it. Uh, the bad guy of this game, his name is Bad Custard? And he uh, stole, he used to be a, a cook in the, the castle, and he stole a magical book and turned the knights into the Shadow Knights. All, all of these knights that are in the garden right now were the Shadow Knights. Uh, but Bad Custard had transformed them to be evil, uh, and now we're, we're going to Bad Custard's lair now that we've saved all of them, now that we are true Knight Kingsley. And we're gonna we're gonna beat up bad custard and save the day. This is a, a big beach island. There's nothing on this island. It's just the the fight and the entrance. Luckily, we can just like jump in here and it warps us over to the staircase. And then we just need to fight bad custard. This fight uh, again. A lot of the boss fights are pretty straightforward. There is some kind of some kind of weird something that you can do here. If you can get extra hits in, like I had mentioned for the Gallagher fight, uh, you can really mess with this pattern, but again, we just don't have a consistent way to do that. I, I mentioned Lucas earlier. One named Lucas did get a weird pattern on this fight by doing that once, and we just, we don't know. I wish I could say more. Oh. This is... It's a tough fight, though, because he throws this magic at you, and you can't block it. You have to dodge it, or you can just tank the hits. But you don't have that much health, so tanking the hits is not always an option, unfortunately. Uh, but it's just a few more hits here. We're gonna get one more hit, and then Bad Custard is gonna walk to the final position uh, that he'll stand in. What are you doing, Bad Custard? Okay. And then when he hit him, when we hit him again, that's gonna be time. He's gonna run to the end of a plank. We hit him. It starts a cutscene. That's that's the end of the run. <clears throat> so it'll be just a second here. And... 
Next time. Woo. 5018, that's not bad. That's not bad. Um, what happened? We got an extra game over at the start of Dungeon 4 on purpose. We got a game over on the Dungeon 4 boss. Not a game over, just a death. That was less on purpose, but it was... It happened. What else happened? There was something else, wasn't there? There was like a big time loss somewhere? The snuff fight. I did mess up the snuff fight. That was basically it. It was just a lot of small time losses. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Yo, Rad. Thank you for the GG's, everybody. When is Queensley's adventure? Someday. That's the sequel. I will buy the rights to Kingsley's Adventure and make Queensley's Adventure. And then we get a nice little uh, dance party cutscene here. <clears throat> I love the juggler's animation over on the side where he's juggling and then occasionally throws in the air to clap. It's great. I love this game. That's the run. That's that's all I really have to say. I already, I already basically talked about all the community stuff I wanted to. Um, I guess there's just a few names that I need to look up, and other than that, I would be very comfortable doing this for a marathon. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I guess I could try to talk through the credits. There are other things I could mention. Alistair Lindsay, who did the music, has had a, a pretty... Pretty good career. Um, could talk about... Uh, I'd be curious to see that, Rad. I felt fine talking the whole time, but... Um, but I guess it's just a question of are there other things that I would want to say that I'm missing right now? So yeah, if you wouldn't mind sending, me, sending that my way, I'd appreciate that. <clears throat> 